we have to ask ourselves about the process of innovation as well. What I've witnessed in the last several years is, is the way organizations innovate has fundamentally changed. You take someone like Disney. What, what did they do in the past? You know, five years ago, ten years ago, the way Disney innovated, you know, was they would come up with a product, they would come up with you know, the assortment, they would come up with what they were going to sell, they would figure out the merchandising plan, they would take that to the stores, they would come up with a marketing campaign around that. That's the way the world worked. They figured out what they were going to produce, they would go to the stores, and they would develop the marketing. For Disney, to a degree, that has gone completely upside down. Because what is happening is you have organizations like Tar Target and Walmart, organizations who have very deep insight into consumer behavior, are coming up to them and are saying, we, 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 this, here's our plan for the fall. Here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to roll out to our customers. Here's what we need you at Disney to produce. Here's what we need you to, to innovate on. And for Disney, their innovation world has gone upside down. How many of us, as food companies, you know, we're out there and, and we're innovating, we're the ones coming up with the ideas, we're the ones who are determining the innovation agenda. How many of us are focused on working with our packaging companies, and working with the retailers, working with the stores, and going out to them and saying, what are you planning because you're closer to the ground? And let's have you tell us what we should be developing, what we should be innovating, what we should be concentrating upon. When you think about the rate of change of, of, of innovation occurring with packaging, packaging. <coughs> Silgan containers. I mean, they've been bringing out tin cans for 110 years. You know, we think with the, you know, the trend to fresh and you know, the focus on local food, is there a future for tin cans? You look at what they've done. They've come up with the capability for multicolored tin cans, but not only that, massive flexibility in terms of the production and the style and the shape of what they can do with tin cans. And challenge your thinking this way. You know, you know what happened to Ford and Chrysler and all these car companies? They were in a mindset in which they would tear down the assembly line once a year, rebuild it, pump out 700,000 cars, SUVs that nobody wanted, and a year later tear down the assembly line and pump out 700,000 other cars. And you know what Honda does? Honda is in a situation in which they can pump out 2,000 cars of a particular model, spend a few hours to change the assembly line because consumer demand has shifted, and pump out 3,000 cars of another model, and shut down the line for a few hours and bring out 5,000 cars of another model. Do we have that type of flexibility because the consumer is bored, the consumer is changing faster, markets are changing faster, innovation is growing faster.